Hello and welcome to Psych Boost. This is the second video in the Psychopathology series, and in this video we'll be looking at the behavioural, emotional and cognitive characteristics of the three psychopathologies we need to look at in this unit. Those psychopathologies are OCD, depression and phobias. So we'll start with phobias. You're probably aware of phobias as an extreme irrational fear to some object or to some situation. The more commonly known ones are arachnophobia, a fear of spiders, or claustrophobia, a fear of enclosed spaces. But here we're going to go a little bit more into depth, into characteristics that can be classified as behavioural, so what actions the sufferer carries out, emotional, so the feelings that they have, and cognitive, so their thought processes. So first of all, let's look at the behavioural characteristics. One common behaviour would be avoidance. So for example, we can imagine someone with a phobia of birds, so ornithophobia. Now they see a pigeon land in the street in front of them. They may then cross the street in order to avoid that pigeon. So this is what we would see as an avoidance behaviour, adapting their behaviour to avoid the phobic object. We might also suggest that the person with a phobia will also display panic. So this is an uncontrollable physical response. And you can imagine this happening at the sudden appearance of the phobic object. So they'll scream, they'll hyperventilate, and they might try and run away and try, try and escape. As a behavioural characteristic, we're looking at the physical actions, not the emotional side of panic. One other behavioural characteristic might be a generalised failure to function. We expect people to carry out normal behaviours as part of day-to-day -day life. But if you've got a serious phobia, you might not be able to engage the world in the way that most people do. You might, for example, avoid socialising outside if you're afraid of bees. Or you might find it difficult to hold down employment if your phobic object was something that would be encountered at work. So let's look at some emotional characteristics. So phobia is an anxiety disorder, so it's characterised by an uncomfortable high arousal. People with phobias often aren't able to relax and feel pleasurable emotions. This is because their thought processes is focused on a potential interaction with the phobic object or situation. Now we all know the unpleasant feeling when we're worried about something coming up in our future. We're not able to relax and we aren't able to feel much pleasure in our day-to-day -day activities. Now for someone with a phobia, if they're constantly concerned about the smallest social interaction for example, they're going to be pretty much permanently in this high, uncomfortable arousal state. Now linked to the behavioural characteristic of panic, the emotional side of it would be fear. So you can imagine the immediate presentation of the phobic object, say for example a spider, is going to release a really intense emotional state. This is linked to our fight or flight response. It's a sensation of extreme unpleasant alertness that might only go away when the phobic object has been removed. Onto the cognitive characteristics, which are four processes. First up, irrational beliefs. Sufferers are likely to really overstate the importance of, say, a social situation. Feeling if they say or do something wrong, it might have long-lasting implications in their social life. Or they may feel that a spider is far more dangerous than it really is. So they hold irrational beliefs around their phobic object or situation. Now because a person with a phobia focuses their attention so much on these phobic objects, they're not able to engage in day-to-day -day life in the same way that other people will. So this is going to interrupt their ability to focus at work and conduct other tasks that they need to do or find pleasurable. So we'd state this as reduced cognitive capacity. So just a brief mention about the subtypes of phobias. The ones we're most likely to be aware of are simple phobias. Simple phobias are phobias of objects. So these objects could be animals, so common ones might be dogs, snakes or spiders. Maybe there's phobias of medical implements, such as needles or dental equipment, perhaps phobias of categories of people, such as policemen, bus drivers, or even women, and perhaps even objects we might see as very, very neutral, such as buttons. Another category of phobias would be social phobias. So this is a fear of social situations which can cause embarrassment. So this could be given a performance or a presentation at work, or maybe just interacting with other people that are strangers at a party. And another category will be agoraphobia. So this is a generalised fear of leaving a safe environment. So perhaps they don't want to leave home because leaving home it causes anxiety. On to OCD. OCD again is another anxiety disorder defined by obsessions which are intrusive constant thoughts usually concerning contamination or safety and compulsions. Compulsions are the behavioural response to the obsessions in an attempt to deal with the constant recurrent thought processes. So of course we do have to break down our characteristics into behavioural, emotional and cognitive. When we break this down, behavioural will be the compulsion aspect. 
and cognitive will be the obsessions aspect, as cognitive is for processes and behavioural are the physical actions. So for behavioural, the defining feature of OCD are the compulsions. So generally we'll have two categories. One, checking behaviour. So this might be testing that the lights are on or off, or checking that the door is properly locked, or maybe checking that the gas is definitely being turned off. Another common compulsion is a cleaning ritual behaviour. Um, so this might be cleaning the kitchen down very thoroughly, or possibly cleaning hands to an extreme amount, up to the point where their hands become kind of sore and scabbed. Another common behavioural characteristic is avoidance. Now if you know if interacting with a bin in your house might cause the obsessive thought of contagion, you might avoid trying to use the bin. If you know that leaving the house will cause the obsessive thought of concern about whether the door has been locked, you might avoid leaving the house. So you're avoiding behaviour that you might normally carry out without the disorder. This in itself might lead to social impairment where you're unable to engage in normal social activities because perhaps you aren't able to leave the house in order to take part. Or even when you're out and engaging with other people, because you're constantly obsessing, you might leave social engagements. On to emotional characteristics. So OCD is an anxiety disorder, so its main emotional feature would be an extreme anxiety. Now this anxiety, of course, comes from the obsession and the constant worst case scenario thinking that defines them. The constant thought, is the gas on? Did I turn off the hob? Might lead to the worst case scenario thought, well, when I get home, my house will be burnt down, my cat will be dead, and will lead you to a high state of anxiety. Now that might lead you to want to rush home and check that the gas is switched off. You want to resist that urge, you want to resist that compulsion, and the resistance of the compulsion is also going to cause anxiety. Now follow on from this, a feeling of not being in control of your own actions, of maybe not being able to engage with the world socially in a way that you might want to, potentially would lead to distress and maybe even depression, as you're not able to engage in those enjoyable and social activities. And on to the obsessions. So obsessions are reoccurrent thoughts, they're very unpleasant, and they produce anxiety. Now they tend to be of the worst case scenario of what could happen. So if you're on holiday, for example, and you worry that you maybe have left the door unlocked, you might have the reoccurrent thought that someone's in your house and they're stealing your property, uh, and you need to rush back and check your door. Now sufferers do understand the irrationality behind their thought processes. They know that the worst case scenario that they're imagining probably isn't going to come true, even if they have left the door unlocked. Very unlikely a thief is going to know this, check the door and gain access to the property, but they're still unable to stop having this catastrophic thinking. They're very much unable to control this repetitive thought process. So a couple of examples of some expressions of OCD. Quite common, excessive cleanliness. This is an obsessive thought about contamination, resulting in that compulsive hand or object washing. Checking behaviour. Thoughts generally are about safety. So checking if doors are locked and gas is switched on, that kind of stuff. Another example which is quite common is hoarding behaviour. So there's an obsessional concern about the consequences of passing with objects. And this is going to result in gathering behaviour, even of objects that are of very low value. Because there's a constant worst case scenario thought process, what could happen if they gave up on this object? And finally we have depression. Depression is a mood disorder. So we generally understand this as a consistent and long-lasting sense of sadness. But of course we need to be able to define depression according to behavioural, emotional and cognitive characteristics. Let's start with behavioural. Quite common with people with depression is severe weight loss. This results from a big reduction in appetite. People with depression also tend to display low energy. They don't really have the motivation to take part in what they might normally enjoy. So behavioural activities such as exercise, hanging out with friends, they don't tend to happen as much. People with depression might also do the behavioural actions of self-harm. So they might injure themselves in some way. So quite common is cutting, um, but of course in extreme situations, suicide. Another behavioural aspect that we might notice with someone with depression is, well, low personal hygiene or low care for themselves. They don't really have the motivation to maybe do their hair and makeup as they usually would, um, wash their clothes or get a shower. You might also notice they don't keep the environment around them, such as their home, clean and tidy like they usually would. The emotional characteristics, of course, is the defining feature of depression of sadness. And this is a persistent, very intense lowered mood. Another emotion that someone with depression might feel are feelings of guilt. They might feel completely helpless and that they have no value in comparison to other people. 
cognitive features might include poor concentration. They're not able to give their full attention to tasks that they need to do. And when they need to make a decision, they're unable to choose between competing options. So they're generally indecisive. Another thing you might notice about people with depression is they're very concerned about events. Thoughts they do have about themselves, the environment and events are always biased towards negative perspectives. So when it comes to depression, what we're generally aware of, major depression or unipolar depression, affects about 25% of women and 12% of men over their lifetimes. So it's quite a common disorder. Major depression just includes the depressive symptoms we talked about above. However, you might be aware of bipolar or manic depression. This is a much rarer disorder that affects only about 2% of people. These people also have manic episodes, so they have high energy at some points. Their moods become raised, higher than might what be expected from the situation. They also have a very high work ethic. They might actually be able to get quite a lot done and be quite creative during these manic periods. But in these times as well, they might engage in very risky behaviour. And they might even have delusions about who they are and their abilities. So I hope you enjoyed this Psych Boost video. Please, if you haven't already, click subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, give me a like. If you have any questions at all, pop them in the comment box and I'll try and get back to you. If you'd like the free resources that come with this course, I put the posters and some other things into this Dropbox link. Until the next video.